Hey, what's going on out there, YouTube? This is SCL0320, back at it again for a brand new movie review. Straight Out the Gate came out for Thursday's premiere of Godzilla. Starlining, you got Brian Cranston, you got Aaron Johnson, you got Elizabeth Olsen, you got, what is the gentleman's name? I think it's Ken, Quinn Watanabe from uh, Last Samurai, Inception. Uh, you got so many different actors in this one that um, it's just, it was interesting. That's all I'm going to say so far. Um, I'm going to go break it down like I normally do. I'm going to talk about the scope, the look, the visuals effects for the movie. Uh, on top of that with the score and the theme for the music. Talk about the character dissection, how the actors did in their roles. And then I'm also going to talk about the story. I'm going to talk about the pros and the cons. I do have some cons for this one and I do have some pros for it. But I'm going to talk about both in the story section. So I think it, looking at from where the movie started, I think it started in, where was the location? Uh, it was in Japan first. And then it went from Japan and went over to a couple different locations. Most of them are around the Midwest. Um, there was different sites from such as California, such as Hawaii. Um, it was very, the scope was beautiful. There were times where in the beginning of the movie, you'll, you'll notice, you'll see like a helicopter flying and you don't know if it's CG or not. My friend next to me, he had said that it was CG and I looked at it and I was like, I don't know. But the way it looks, it's like you got a helicopter moving. Like normally you'll see the back of a helicopter, the way people shoot a movie. But this time you actually see the helicopter to the side and it pans out and it's just a, such a beautiful, elegant shot. It was like they put a lot into this. I'm not sure what the budget for this movie was, but they did an amazing job with the setting, the land for everything. Um, the pacing was that of, if you've looked at Jaws, if you've looked at... Um, shoot what is what else the movie signs for instance and how you finally get to the reveal of the monster that's that kind of build up if you're looking for the movie to have like Godzilla immediately there and you're thinking the CG such as like Pacific Rim it's not like that it's more on the classic appeal because this is their first movie now when it carries on if it carries on then yeah you'll get that Pacific Rim style but this one it's had such a subtle touch to it that you start seeing like instances of the monster you see a lot of smoke most of the time you see a lot of another kind of thing that is in this movie that I cannot reveal to you um, they did a good job not spoiling too much of it in the trailers but they did a good they, they, they did the monsters of this movie justice in that the look and the feel when they actually are fighting when they actually are maneuvering you see them in the back fold doing their thing but at the same time you got the good placement and cinematography for all the actors such as Brandon Cranston when he's doing his thing when Aaron Johnson is in an action sequence and he's trying to survive for his life like it, it, they interface very well they interface very well um, I'm interested there was a preview for a movie that's coming up I'm interested in looking at the edge of darkness with Tom Cruise because that movie the CG in it mixed with the monsters in it it looks so authentic I was like wow this looks pretty legit um, but that was just a side note <laughs> anyway but the look and the feel of this movie was just beautiful and by the end of it if you are a Godzilla fan you will appreciate the essence of the fight sequences on top of what's actually going on there's a lot of different Easter eggs if you've looked at any of the older ones, if you've looked at um, the different monsters that uh, Godzilla used to fight, there's subtle little no no nods to them that I can't talk about here. I'm probably do a another spoiler field review later, but I, I mean, it was just such a beautiful looking movie. And IMAX 3D, it was really good. Now, I don't know about the 3D. Um, 3D at times, it did shine very well. But just the scope of the movie, it needs to be looked at in IMAX. I can't imagine looking at it on a smaller screen, to be quite honest. Um, the score for this, the musical score for it, I thought it was very well placed. A lot of times, especially in the very beginning when you have Brian Cranston's character going through um, his appeal to what's going on with the plant that he's at in Japan, uh, it felt kind of like very 
slow pace to try to build up for something. And then there were certain spots where I was like, man, this feels like the old school Godzilla, not the Godzilla 2000 that I did not like. <laughs> but it felt like there were times that there were subtle classic tones and different different things playing that it fit, but at the same time, it was really kind of out of place. And that's what it needs to be. It has to be a kind of a free falling kind of movie because things happen just like that. And I mean, there's a lot of moments that are eye catching, like suspense kind of things that happen. Like a couple of people next to me were jumping out and saying, ah, and then some people were like, oh, and then some people were like, epic. <laughs> so, I mean, definitely the proof is in the pudding in the sense of how people perceived it and watched it and they, they definitely enjoyed the action sequences and I definitely did it on top of that. So, as far as the action, as far as the, um, the musical score for it, I have to give that probably like a 9 out of 10. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and try to dissect the main, what, four actors. Um, and I mean, I don't know if you can technically classify Godzilla as actor, but if Godzilla was that actor, the amount of FaceTime he gets for what the material he did, showmanship. <laughs> he did a great, no, I'm just messing, I'm just messing. Um, but, so off the gate, I'm gonna say Brian Cranston, he does his thing in this one. Anybody has looked at Malcolm in the Middle or has looked at Drive or has looked at Argo or has looked at, of course, Breaking Bad, you know this man has acting chops, but he does such a good job with the amount of time that he's actually in this movie that it was so subtle and so heartfelt and it was such anguish and pain that you could feel through his emotions. I, it was like, it was really good. Um, and so I think he his his appeal to me was so high. I was like, wow, what more is gonna happen? And it kind of stopped short a little bit, but it still, it resonated throughout the film. The theme of what he, his character was, which was the main scientist, and it was the one that was actually trying to figure out what happened years ago back in the plant, which I'll talk about later in the story. <clears throat> but, um, be honest with you, I felt that um, Ken, uh, how do I pronounce his name? Watanabe, Watanabe. Uh, I actually liked his character a lot. I mean, he had an assistant, a female assistant, I forgot her name, I think it's Sally, uh, ha Sally Hawkins. Um, but I think that I really liked Ken's character because Ken understood in the very beginning what was taking place. He understood the dynamics of what was going on with Godzilla and what was going on with the plant and what was going on with Brian Cranston's character. And I mean, Joe Brody is Brian Cam Brian uh, um, shoot Brian Cranston's character. That's the name of his character. And um, he's got through this precipice where something happens early in the movie and then later on it's brought full circle and you have Ken's character is like brought to the forefront of trying to figure out how do we deal with all this? And he brought back to some of Brian Cranston's older theories. And I mean, I, the thing, I, then I'm not gonna go to the pros and cons yet, but I really liked Ken's character. He was on target. I just really liked his character. I don't know if that necessarily had to do with his acting or anything like that, because he, he was in it for a long period of time. He didn't do a lot of acting, but I just liked the character in general. Um, so you got other characters such as Aaron, Aaron uh, Taylor Johnson, and he also got Elizabeth Olsen. Elizabeth Olsen's character, uh, she was in the movie <laughs> um, not as much as Aaron Johnson's character was, uh, just because she was kind of left at home and trying to deal with and process what was going on. And she's also a nurse, and so she was constantly busy. But the scene that she was in, she did a really good job. It was very emotional because she didn't know if her husband was going to live. She didn't know what was going to happen. So I think that Elizabeth Olsen did a really good job. I'm really interested to see how they're going to play the characters Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver in the Days of Future Past, which is coming next week. So yeah, they're, they're making that money. <laughs> but I did appreciate her character. I liked her character, actually. And then the relationship with their son was actually really good for both of them. And I forgot the son's name. What is his name? I think his name was Sam. Sam. Sam Brody. Uh, her, her character's name was Ellie. But then you have Aaron Johnson's character whose name is Ford. Ford Brody. <clears throat> the son of Brian Cranston's character. Um, and with his role, a lot of people are going to say he was flat. A lot of people are going to say that... He wasn't working with anything. He was just there for show, for the action sequences. And he was to a fault. But to me, he resonates as the, the action anticlimactic hero in the sense that he has such history that's so deep 
that he hasn't even processed the emotions behind that. He just went straight into military work and actually going. Everything that's happening, you see him going through it and he just keeps on getting up, getting up, getting up. But the way that I took it as the way that his acting shined through that is that there was one line that Brian Creston's character said, do whatever it takes. And that stayed with him so no matter when there's times where he was like worried about his wife or his child no matter when there was times where he didn't know if he was going to live or die he was just moving he was continuously going like at a steady pace but the the time frame that he was really emotional it was before brian cancer's character had said that to him which is a certain specific moment in the film and before that he's dealt with all these different inner turmoils from what happened before in the beginning of the movie and he's just got this bitterness and arc in his heart towards his dad and it's just you can tell the emotions are all there but you don't see him like pour out i don't think his character can afford to be crying i don't think his character could honestly afford to be like dealing with pacing worrying about this is too much for him to do like his role was to survive. His role was to take care of what he had to do as a military soldier and as a dad. So I, I, I can appreciate the, the dedication to how the character was written. That's the way I see it. Um, so yeah, around, all around, I mean, the acting was pretty decent. I mean, Brian Cranston definitely shines in the whole entire thing. I'd probably give the acting maybe a 7. 7.5 out of 10 just because it wasn't the other side characters such as the military people that some people that I do recognize from other movies they really didn't uh, shine that much and just like I was saying with Ken's assistant she didn't like resonate with me that well um, she was kind of just there but then when I think about it going switching over to the story this story is grounded in the mythos of Godzilla. If you understand anything about the old school Godzilla, not the 2000 version, I've said that maybe four times in this review, uh, then you will have such an appreciation for this movie because there are certain elements that they take in from certain key characters and how Godzilla fits into the mode of, okay, is he something that we can even kill? Is it something that we can even destroy? Why is he here? Why is he even like destroying our city? Like is is he such a serious threat? You know, all of these kind of questions are being asked for people that's never seen the movie or seen any of the older movies before. But for me, knowing what happened before, I made it, it I appreciated the story so much because it was a story builder and it was a start to the mythology of Godzilla. And by the end of it, they can honestly continue it and keep going with it. And that that was that was what I was going into it, that's what I was worried about. I was worried that they were gonna do something drastic, try to Hollywood it up, and just have just a whole bunch of action and flair. And there, there was action, but there wasn't a lot of pacing as far as Godzilla doing a lot of action. There are times where like He'd be fighting, and you see him do a fighting, and all of a sudden it stopped. And people get upset, like, but the buildup when it comes to Jaws, like, you see people getting killed and hurt, especially the first one. Not talking about the second one or the other one, because you see them a lot later on because the character's already been established. But at this one, they, they it's, like, it's like a slow build. Like, you'll see the character come up, and you have, like, uh, <clears throat> Aaron Taylor Johnson's character dealing with like working with the military and trying to help them out and trying to save his wife and trying to save his child because everything that happened in the beginning of the movie is literally projected into the rest of the movie 15 years later and that's the only spoiler that I'm going to give you because if if I tell you the beginning of the story then that's the biggest spoiler of them all and it reveals something more when you got Ryan Cranston's character that's trying to study that like just like in the trailers they're saying, well, these are earthquakes that cause these different things. He's like, no, I know what this is. You covered it up in XYZ, XYZ. And he does just such a good job of resonating that character. And it actually pushes the whole story in a sense because once everything is brought to the forefront, like, what are you going to do? The thing that I, I'll talk about now is the pros and the cons. So I'd already said my pros were definitely that they stayed true to the mythology. They treated the character right. Everything from the way he moved, everything from the way he fought, I really loved. The way that Brian Cass's character and Ken's character carried their uh, character's movements and the setup for what's to come, 
I thought the setup was really well done. The pacing as far as the action with Aaron Johnson and even Elizabeth Olsen and what, and what scenes that she was in, it was actually, it was really awesome as far as the action movie. This is, but the thing is, it's not an action drama. This is not an action uh, suspense thriller in the sense, you know, which a lot of the movies now, that's what we're we're kind of spoiled in a sense, that's what we want, you know. This is just a really good action movie that has good actors in it that play their characters to the T to what the mythology were for those older movies that everybody knows and loves. And so the cons come in for me is that what, there's a fine line between that. Like I've talked to one of my friends that I'm going to be doing a review with him later. Keaton, shout out to you bro if you're looking at this review. Um, he's going to be doing some collaboration reviews with me probably probably next week probably for X-Men Days of Future Past most likely and we're going to do it on Gang Google Hangouts do it live so maybe y'all can go and join us in the chat and give your opinions after we look at the movie um, but he was talking to me and he was saying man I wanted a lot of action this is what I expected and I, just, I was like I understand this side of the spectrum you know but I can see that there has to be an equal balance of distribution for people that haven't understood or even haven't necessarily gone through and expecting to just have the mythology represented the right way as a building up and then the people that just want just raw action it has to be an even line and so the, I thought it I, I really thought it was fine but there were times that bothered me were like the older one the humans that are trying to destroy these creatures are trying to do something they are making things worse <laughs> and I mean that's how it was in the older one but I didn't necessarily like that I thought that okay why would you if the monster needs this why would you try to hurt it with this and I, I mean there's times where I just felt like the humans were in the way and I mean I'm not talking about the actors I'm talking about the military in the sense of how they were being used and distributed it was like they were just there and it was like Skittles getting squished in the sense because at a certain point <clears throat> you realize that it's, it's, it's not just Godzilla that's a threat it's something even bigger than that and lives are at stake and you're doing things and you're using your normal gun and it's like what is that gun gonna do <laughs> and that, to me it, it made no sense for them to keep trying to push that um, but I mean I can understand why they did it but I think that naturally the military at a certain point would try to incline to back off and figure out what's going on but at the same time they do have to protect and serve but if anything they should have done in my opinion as a con was just try to evacuate everybody through air and let it be but it's a lot it's a lot that I can't say because of spoilers but that was the only cons that I had honestly um, I didn't have really any other gripes. I really loved the resolve of the movie. The final fight scene was epic. The visual effects were epic. I mean, IMAX was epic. Everything as far as how they actually did the setup for this generation to understand so that now the next movie that comes out, you're just like, okay, let's go. It's time, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but uh, I look forward to maybe them making another one. I uh, hope they do. Um, but as far as the story is concerned, I'd probably give the story maybe a 7 out of 10, most likely. So all around, I'd probably give this movie an 8.5, maybe an 8.0 or 8.5. Let's say 8.3. Can I do that? Okay. <laughs> but I really enjoyed it. I'm going to go see it again. Um, I was, it was a little distracting at some points during the movie. So I'm like, alright, I'm going to try to look at this again for all is worth and try to engulf it in and any kind of um, spoilers or any kind of easter eggs that I miss I'm gonna try to make sure I pick it up definitely gonna go see an IMAX again highly recommend you see an IMAX even though the 3D is not always there just seeing an IMAX is fully worth it to see such a large scale creature that is done right and I mean why did I not go and see? The, they do Godzilla justice I mean you just have to see it for yourself you understand when you see it anyway I'm going to be doing a review for X-Men Days of Future Past next week. I'm going to probably actually go and look at the Vampire Diaries season finale and I'm going to do a review for that probably tomorrow. And then I'm going to also tomorrow upload my spoiler review for The Amazing Spider-Man as well. So, without further ado, 
This is SEM0220 signing out. Y'all have a blessed night, a blessed evening, a blessed morning. Just a blessed time and a blessed weekend. It's about to be Friday. Anyway, y'all take care. Later.